All right, so welcome to Math 0306 pre-algebra. I know that you guys are all excited. I can tell by the smiles on your faces. If you guys at home could only see the looks on their faces, I mean, it's, it's, it's almost too much. Um, so, of course, we're going to start off in section 1.1, and we're going to be talking about place value. I want to make sure that whenever we say numbers in this class that we are saying them correctly. Just like I told you on the first day of class, I want you to speak correctly, especially when it comes to math. You will use proper notation. You will use proper symbols because math is a universal language. So make sure that we speak it correctly. So remember that in our numbering system, we use a place value system. Now, when we say we use a place value system, uh, what we mean by this is that each, each place or each spot in a number has its own meaning. So each spot or each place in a number has its own meaning. So that any, any number that I write, we should all be able to read it the exact same way. And one of the things that we have here is our whole number place value chart. Now we will expand on this later when we start talking about decimals. But right now, just want to make sure that we know our numbers. You always want to sound intelligent whenever you speak, especially when it comes to math. All right. So I'm just going to be... Um, kind of loosey-goosey here with these numbers. So far to write this. You see how imaginative this number is, right? It's just like those credit card numbers that you see when the credit card application comes in the mail to you. It's the exact same thing. But we know that each spot here has its own value, right? And we group these using the comma, okay? Now, in other countries and other cultures, they may do this a little bit differently. Where we use a decimal point, they may use a comma instead, okay? And where we have commas here, they might use what looks like a decimal point. But that's just the way things go. So, like here, we know that we have our one spot, ten spot, and hundreds. These are the numbers that we are most familiar with, right? And that tells us how many tens, hundreds, ones, and so on that we have. But then as you move on, this second group of numbers where you have the seven, eight, nine, what are these guys? This is measuring what? These measure thousands, right? So here, so these are all measuring thousands. This, this whole group is. And then what about the next group? What is it measuring? This next set of numbers, what does it measure? Millions. This is measuring millions. And then the last set that we have here measures what? Yeah. Measures billions. If we were to make the number even larger, what's going to come after billions? Trillions. After trillions would come quadrillions, quintillions, sextillions, septillions, and so on. Now, when I have the thousands here, we're talking about thousands, and then of course you would have your, so I guess you, you have the nine thousands, and then of course you have ten thousands, hundred thousands, and, and then you go on to the millions, so then you have millions, right? Millions is where the six spot is, and you go into the what? 10 millions, and then 100 million. So you see this spot, or you, you see this pattern start to emerge. You have ones, tens, hundreds, one thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, one millions, ten millions, hundred millions, right? So when we have this, 
Any number that's kind of of this form is going to be a whole number. We want to make sure that we know what a whole number is. Do you guys know what a whole number is? You're kind of nodding your head. You sure you know what a whole number is? All right, well, let's talk about that. What is a whole number? Okay. Now, for whole numbers, this is actually made up of another set of numbers plus an extra number. When I have whole numbers, this is the set of natural numbers. It's a set of natural numbers, what we oftentimes call the accounting numbers. and zero. Okay. So when we talk about whole numbers, we're talking about the natural numbers. When I talk about the counting numbers, when you start counting, how do you start counting? One. One. With one, two, three, four, and so on, right? That's how we count. So that's natural numbers. One, two, three, four, five, and so on. Whole numbers takes those natural numbers and it also throws in the number zero. So when I look at the whole numbers, you have zero, one, two, three, and then so on. We'll use the ellipsis here to show that it just kind of continues on in that same kind of pattern. And a little bit later we'll talk about how we take these whole numbers and we create integers. Okay? So whole numbers are these numbers that you deal with every single day. Whether you're dealing with zero or any of the counting numbers. Like if I were to count the number of students that are in this class. We have, oh what is that? Gosh, I have to do math and I'm recording this already. 9, 10, 15. We have 20 students in here right now. Okay? 20 is a whole number, right? Okay? If I start talking about things that are decimals or fractions, then we're not talking about whole numbers. If you remember negative numbers, those are not considered whole numbers. Okay? So if I were to give you just a set of numbers, if I have 5, negative 7, eight-fifths, zero, ninety-seven, four-point nine. And I were to ask you to identify the whole numbers here. What are the whole numbers? So five is a whole number. We said zero is a whole number, right? See it right here. And four-point nine? Oh, 97, right? These are examples of whole numbers. Okay. Now what we're going to see later on is that negative 7 almost looks like a whole number, but he's got the negative sign, right? Yeah. This is called an integer. 8 fifths, although it, you see it's kind of made up of whole numbers, this is called a rational number. 4.9 is a decimal, and it's a decimal that ends at the, the nine. So this is also considered a rational number. But we'll talk more about those guys as the season progresses.